Hello and welcome to this video presentation of the technique of fibular osteotomy following a free fibular flap harvest. This is the first video of a two part presentation. This video will illustrate the technique of the bone cuts on a rapid prototype model. The second video will illustrate the technique of elevating the vascular pedicle and the FHL muscle in a live patient. For the purposes of the osteotomy and planning, some instrumentation would most often suffice. Now imagine the scenario where a right-sided mandibular reconstruction is required the plate has been pre-bent and has been removed to plan for the osteotomy. The first blue mark on the left side indicates where the proximal segment of the fibula begins. The circular marking indicates where the osteotomy of the bone has to be made. And the blue mark on the right side near the ascending ramus is the end of the second osteotomized segment of the fibula. So we need one osteotomy in the region of the circle and two segments of fibula bone between the native mandible. So this is part of the first segment, the second segment. Here the plating is done to the ramus and here is where the osteotomy needs to be done. A paper scale is taken and the edges are snipped off so that it starts from 0 or 1 millimeter. And this edge can be trimmed according to how the bone contact needs to be established with the natal mandible. Now using this paper scale, we measure the length of the first segment of the fibula that is required. And in this patient, it was about 2.8 centimeters. And an oblique cut is made. And the piece of uh, paper roller is brought towards the plate. Now this denotes the proximal segment. Now the same paper scale is used once again. And the base of the osteotomy that is required is measured across the circular mark that was made on the outside. And this was again about a centimeter. Now using the scissors, the base is cut away. And then the paper scale is placed close to the first segment to see for fit. If the fit is not correct, the edges can be trimmed till the edges of the paper bits come into good contact. The distal marking is made where the fibula should be in contact with the mandible. And finally, these two pieces of uh, paper scale are placed behind the plate because that's how the fibula bone is going to be accommodated. Now this is a model of a fibula printed on a 3D printer. The blue stripes indicate the peroneal surface. This is the left fibula. The red line indicates the peroneal vessels which are on the medial side. And the blue line here is where the septum is attached and the skin paddle uh, is at the edge of the septum. We need to infracture the fibula to contour it, meaning that the base of the osteotomy is on the inferior surface. We generally leave six centimeters of the distal fibula without uh, disturbing it. And then now, using the paper scale as a template, the length of the segment that's required is marked at the distal end of the fibula. The paper scale is taken out and the bits are straightened to expose the complete extent of the osteotomy. 
Now we must understand that this osteotomy has to be replicated at the base of the fibula, meaning just distal to the pedicle. The distal cut is marked all around the bone. And then because the osteotomy has to have the base on the inferior surface, we flip the um, paper fragments. It requires some time to keep it held in place. And then the wedge osteotomy that is required is marked on the inferior border. Always remember that the direction of the base is marked correctly. If you invert the direction of the base, um, the osteotomy segments will go outwards rather than inwards. Now the distal, the proximal osteotomy is marked once again. The direction of the osteotomy is confirmed once more and this is the peroneal surface. Here I'm just reinforcing the markings of the osteotomy. The triangle is usually on the inferior border, but the apex is on the peroneal surface. And this is an important factor to consider. This is the most critical part of the osteotomy. Start with your saw vertically downwards for a few millimeters and then stop. Then tilt your hand towards one side and follow one of the sides of the triangle. Do not complete the cut yet. Go back to the apex. And repeat the cut on the other side of the triangle. Remember the pedicle is posterior and has to be separated in a subperiosteal plane to avoid damage. So here's the osteotomy being demonstrated again. You start your osteotomy cuts vertically downwards for a few millimeters and then identify which side you want to do first and then tilt your saw towards that side of the osteotomy fragment. Then you come back up and then turn your hand towards the other side and go to the other side of the triangle. Since this is a 3D model, there's a lot of splintering, but you can see that the triangle has formed and the base of the triangle is where the vessel would have been elevated in a subperiosteal plane. Forgive me for the time it takes to do the osteotomy. As I mentioned, um, this is not real bone and it does take a bit to cut the osteotomy or the um, wedge out. In the second part of the presentation, you would realize that the segments are held together by the periosteum, by the muscular attachments of the FHL muscle if they are used, and by the septum uh, which runs along the entire length of the bone. You can see this is the triangle, and the base of the triangle is towards the pedicle. And once the triangle is removed, these segments come into contact. By principle, it is always good to do the wedge osteotomy removal first, followed by the proximal and distal bone cuts. Now the proximal and distal bone cuts can be angled in a way that they make best contact with the native mandible. Here we see that the osteotomized segments align well within the plate. The 
pedicle surface is medial, the peroneal surface is lateral and the septal attachment is superior. If need be, the ends of the bone can be cut with a saw for better fit or trimmed with a burr, uh, which can also be used to improve the bone contact between the osteotomy segment. Now, if we need to do an ascending ramus reconstruction, what is the plan? In these cases, the base of the osteotomy is where the septum is attached. And the apex of the osteotomy is towards the inferior border, which is quite unlike what we did for a lateral segment. So to illustrate this in this um, video, this is the bone that needs to go in the ascending ramus, but we need to make contact by removing a piece of bone. And the best way to do that would be to keep the base of the osteotomy along the peroneal surface and where the septum is attached and the apex goes to the inferior border. Here we can see that the um, wedge has been marked, the base facing upwards and the apex facing downwards. Again, in the normal patient, it is quite possible to manipulate the uh, fibular bone once there is sufficient subperiosteal lifting of the pedicle and the muscle. It is quite difficult to drill and cut on these models sometimes. Um, so the first cut is made on one side. The second cut is made on the other side with the apex being along the inferior border and the two cuts are then communicated either with a saw or it can be gently chiseled out. So once the osteotomy is removed, this segment aligns quite well for an ascending ramus effect. So in conclusion, the purpose of the first part of this presentation was for all of us to understand what are the angles, what are the apexes, and what are the bases of the osteotomy segments. To understand the direction and the movement of the saw when making a wedge osteotomy. How to use a simple paper scale uh, to make a template and decide the side and size of the osteotomy and the bone fragments and also to understand where the pedicle, the remnants of the peroneal muscle and where the septum is attached, thereby allowing us to keep all these critical structures in view and always reinforcing the direction where the base of the osteotomy has to be. The next presentation will uh, be a demonstration of this technique on a live fibula and I hope um, that the understanding of the technique will be complete when both of you uh, videos are viewed together. Thank you for your time.